In this video, you'll discover an at-home beginner and intermediate exercise routine to decrease the pain from knee arthritis that includes 10 exercises, many of which you've likely never seen before. Hey, what's up? Coach E here from Precision Movement. And today we're gonna to talk about exercises for knee arthritis. Actually not just talk about it, but I'm gonna take you through 10 exercises split up into two routines to help you decrease the pain from knee arthritis. Now, when it comes to arthritis of the knees, there are a lot of myths and misconceptions and things that you need to understand and would really help you to understand before you get on the journey to healing. So we've got another video, which is linked just up here with Dr. Aaron Boynton, who is a surgeon and used to work with every pro team in Toronto, basically. And she's gonna share answers to common questions on knee arthritis, like how do you diagnose knee arthritis? Are PRP shots useful? Is cortisone useful? Are there any supplements that will help with knee arthritis? She'll answer all those questions and more. And it's great to get that background info before you start the exercise program. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure you click the link, which will be linked above and in the description before we get into the exercise routine. Now let's talk exercise. There are a lot of common exercises that are often recommended for people with knee arthritis. Things like static quad stretches, hamstring stretches, calf stretches, and exercises that work quads and hamstrings, as well as the glutes, like glute bridges and clamshells. But we do things a little different here at Precision Movement, where we avoid those typical static stretches of the quads, hamstrings, and calves, because we find that they don't give lasting range of motion improvements, and they can easily irritate connective tissues like tendons and ligaments. We follow a systematic four-step approach at Precision Movement where we first address tissue pliability and structural limitations, then we improve movement patterns and activation patterns, then we go for improving range of motion before integrating everything that you've gained in the previous steps into functional movement patterns that apply to everyday life, the gym, and sport. We're also going to be targeting neglected but very important ranges of motion and muscle activation patterns such as the activation of intrinsic foot muscles. Those are the muscles that help to create the arch in your foot, ankle dorsiflexion range of motion, tibial rotation, psoas strength, and more, things like that. And these are things that you might not have heard of before, but they are very important and I'll break them down for you in a second. Today we're going through 10 different exercises split up into two different routines, a beginner and an intermediate routine. And you're gonna to wanna to start with the beginner routine, whether or not you find the exercises easy, because those will help you to create that foundation so, you, so that you get the most out of the intermediate exercises. And start off doing the routines two to three times a week and for three to six weeks, until you feel comfortable, but at least three to six weeks, then you move on to the intermediate routine. Now let's start off with the beginner routine. And there are five exercises in each routine. And the first exercise in the beginner routine is active self myofascial release for the plantar fascia. And for this technique, you're gonna to want to use a massage ball, which is a little lacrosse ball, or you can find them on Amazon really easily. For the technique, place the ball on the ground, and you can do this standing or seated. And you're gonna put your foot on the ball and place the ball on the metatarsals, that's near your toes. Wrap your toes around the ball, so you're flexing your toes down around the ball, and then as you roll your foot forward, so the ball is moving towards the heel, you're going to extend the toes, which is lifting the toes up towards your knees. Apply a decent amount of pressure, it should feel uncomfortable, but shouldn't leave you in agony and screaming on the floor, but apply a decent amount of pressure and keep moving around the bottom of the foot so that you hit every area of the bottom of the foot. And this technique is going to do two important things. One is to improve the pliability of the plantar fascia. And two, it's going to help you to start to wake up the intrinsic foot muscles that help to create the arch and help to extend the toes. And those are two very important factors for knee and hip health. Because every step you take, if those muscles and those ranges aren't there for you, then you're gonna put more force through the knees and all of the muscles and joints above. 
Keep doing this technique for one to two minutes and then switch feet. The second exercise in the beginner routine is the extended knee ankle plantar flexion dorsiflexion. I know that's a mouthful, but this is a really important technique. What it does is it activates the VMO, which is the medial quadriceps head, and that's a muscle that is often shut off in people who have knee problems. And number two, it's going to help you take your ankle through its full range of motion, working both the calves and the tibialis anterior, which is a muscle that is involved in dorsiflexion or pulling the toes up towards the knees. For this technique, you can do it seated, and you want to start off by straightening out your knee, fully extending your knee, firing up the quads very strong, and hold that extended position. From there, you slowly pull the toes up into dorsiflexion and keep activating into dorsiflexion while you're holding for five seconds and breathing. Then you're going to slowly move into plantar flexion, get, it, get at end range, and keep activating those calves when you're at end range for five seconds. The key here is to keep the knee fully extended the whole time. So you can only really notice this when you move through plantar flexion and dorsiflexion slowly. So go very slowly when you do the movements, when you're at end range, hold with some strength and make sure you're breathing throughout. This technique you'll want to perform for three, three to five cycles per side for two sets. The third exercise is the seated tibial rotation. And this exercise helps to activate the hamstrings and more importantly, it trains the neglected range of tibial rotation or knee rotation. And this range is important because if you don't have it, more rotational stresses are gonna go through tissues like the meniscus, which can lead to premature wear and tear. For this technique, sit down and you have your knees at about 90 degrees. From there, lift the heels up off the ground and then you're gonna rotate both heels out, and that's tibial internal rotation. Hold at the end range while you're activating those muscles to try to get deeper for five seconds, and then slowly move into tibial external rotation, moving the heels in towards each other. Again, at the end range, you wanna keep activating the muscles. You don't just get there and hang out, but keep activating those muscles so that the muscles are fired up and not only getting stronger, but you're increasing your range of motion. For this technique, perform three to five cycles for two sets. The fourth exercise is the hip extension knee flexion dissociation. And this is one of our patented little techniques for that we use to improve your movement patterns. For this technique, you're standing up and you start off by lifting your foot in front of you with a straight knee and then slowly extend your hip, which is bringing your hip your leg back as you flex your knee. What this is going to do is activate the hamstrings and the glutes and it'll lengthen a muscle called the rectus femoris, which is part of the quadriceps group that often gets tight and can lead to irritation of the patella and the tissues under the patella. For this technique, you perform three to five cycles for one to two sets. The fifth exercise in the beginner routine we call the slumpy psoas activation. And this is a really important technique for getting this muscle, the psoas muscle, which is a hip flexor, activated. And it helps to activate it for, with two of its functions. One is flexing the hip, and the other is extending the lumbar spine and providing stability to the lumbar spine. So even with people with back pain, they find this technique can be very beneficial. For the technique, you'll be sitting down in a flexed position, so the slumpy, really slumpy, bad posture position. From there, you're gonna put your hand on your opposite knee and then lift your knee into your hand, lift your foot off the ground and drive your knee into your hand and your hand into your knee. Hold that activation. That should get the psoas working a little bit. And then from there, you sit up into good posture. So stick your butt out into your pelvic tilt, extend the lumbar spine. And then from there, keep the activation going and hold for five seconds while you're breathing. Bring it down slowly and then switch sides. Start off in a slumpy position, hand to opposite knee, lift the foot off the ground and drive the knee into the hand to activate the psoas and go from slumpy to really good posture. Sticking your butt out and extending the spine. Hold for five at the end range with the psoas on and then come out of the activation nice and slow. For this technique, three to five reps per side 
and two sets is sufficient to get that psoas on and strong enough to be used in the exercises that we're going to do in the intermediate program. Now, don't worry if you found that I went a little bit fast and you're worried that you're not going to be able to get all the pointers of the exercises. Because what we've done is we've put together a little cheat sheet, which is a PDF that has the exercises, the name, some pictures, and then bullet point descriptions of the technique and how to execute the exercise properly. You can find that and click up here and go and download that. And we'll also have a link in the description and at the end of the video. Now we're going to get to the intermediate routine, which also has five exercises. And like I said before, do this routine after doing the beginner routine for at least three weeks, but up to six weeks and doing that two to three times a week, because those exercises are going to set the foundation and will make doing these exercises even better. The first exercise in the intermediate routine is the seated four way MTP slide and MTP stands for metatarsal pressure. And this exercise is really going to start to get those intrinsic foot muscles working so that you can walk with a good arch and the arch, one of its functions is to absorb force every time you walk, every time you run or jump, because if that arch isn't working, then that force has got to go somewhere. It's going to go up through your ankles, into your knees, and that's where premature wear and tear can come in. For this technique, sit down on something stable and you want your knees to start off at about 90 degrees. From there, slide one foot forward, keeping the foot flat on the ground and slide it as far as you can without lifting the heel up off the ground. Drive down through the metatarsals, that's where metatarsal pressure comes from, and hold it there for a couple seconds. And then slide the foot back, as far back behind you as you can. This brings you into ankle dorsiflexion, but still maintain metatarsal pressure and keep the foot flat the whole time. Then come back to the start position and you're gonna slide the foot outside. This is going to help to train the ankle into inversion with metatarsal pressure. Hold it for a couple seconds and then slide the foot to the inside, which is going to train the ankle in eversion and the foot in eversion. Maintain metatarsal pressure, hold for a couple seconds, back to center and then switch sides. Again, it's important to keep the foot flat and maintain metatarsal pressure throughout this technique. Repeat for three to five repetitions on each side for one to two sets. The second exercise is the standing glute activation. And while it looks really simple, there's one thing that I want you to try here before we get into the technique of what you're supposed to do. Just stand up and try to squeeze your glutes as hard as you can. Hold it there and just notice what happens to your lower body. Oftentimes people will turn their knees out and they'll have the, the weight of their body go more through the outsides of their feet. This is very common. With this technique, we're trying to break that pattern because when we, want, when we have the glutes on, we want to make sure that our balance is even through the foot and our knees stay in alignment with our hips and our feet. This will decrease the stresses that go through the knee, helping your knees be happier and more pain-free. So for this technique, stand up with a shoulder width stance, weight even between the heels and and the toes, get metatarsal pressure on there, and then just slowly activate the glutes up to as hard as you can squeeze them. But when you do that, make sure that you're keeping your feet where they started, keeping your knees where they started, evenly and in neutral position. Hold it for five to 10 seconds while you're breathing, and then slowly let the glutes go. So again, squeeze the glutes, ramp up the activation slowly, making sure that the knees don't turn out and making sure your feet, your balance, your weight is going evenly through the feet where they started. Hold it for five to 10 and then slowly let the muscles go. This will help you to maintain a more neutral alignment through your lower body as you're walking and running and jumping or climbing stairs, whatever it is you're doing, which again will decrease the forces going through the knees and help you to decrease that wear and tear that occurs on the knees. The third exercise in the intermediate routine is the standing tibial rotation. It's just going to progress the exercise that we did in the beginner routine. So for this technique, just stand up and you're gonna flex your knee, bend your knee so that your heel goes towards your butt as far as you can. From there, you're gonna rotate the heel out and hold that with the flexed knee for five seconds. And then keep the flexed knee and rotate the heel in. So this is external tibial rotation. 
Activate the hamstrings as strong as you can. Hold for five seconds and keep rotating back and forth on one side for three to five reps on one side, then switch sides. And just a note, if you find that your hamstrings cramp up and it's feeling a little bit sketchy, just straighten your knee out a little bit and that'll help you to avoid the hamstring cramp that can be a little bit, a little bit painful if it gets full blown. The fourth technique we're going through in the intermediate, intermediate routine is active self myofascial release for the quads. And you can do this in a couple of different ways. You can use the foam roller on the ground, but I'm gonna show you how to do it just sitting down because we found that a lot of times people with arthritis can have a little bit of irritation getting up and down on the ground. So we just wanna avoid any potential irritation so that we can get this exercise done, the exercise done safely uh, without any issues. So for this technique, just sit down, start with your knee in the straightened position and jam your thumbs into your quads. From there, hold that position of your thumbs and then slowly flex your knee. So what you're doing is you're lengthening the quadriceps while the thumbs are jammed into them and that's going to help to stretch out the tissues and improve their, their pliability so that they can go through their full range of motion without restriction. Repeat this for one to two minutes all over the quads, around the knees, middle of the quads, up high, and then switch sides. And do this for one set on each side. The last exercise in the intermediate routine is something I call the standing dead bug. And if you're familiar with the dead bug on the ground, same idea, except now you're standing. For this technique, it's really helpful to do it on one foot so that you can train those intrinsic foot muscles and the muscles related to balance on one leg while also doing the technique and activating the muscles that we're trying to activate. So start off, lift up one leg, so flex one hip, keeping your knee bent and relaxed, and put your opposite hand into the knee and then drive the knee into the hand and the hand into the knee and hold for five seconds while breathing. Bring it down under control and then switch sides. Again, flexing the hip, driving the hand into the opposite knee and activating the psoas, the abdominals, and even the lats on the side of the arm that is being pressed into the knee. Holding for five, breathing and switching back and forth. Perform this three to five reps on each side for two sets. And this technique is not only going to fire up those muscles, the psoas, the abdominals, and the lats, but it's working a really important pattern, the diagonal core pattern that is used every time we walk, we're swinging our arms, we're flexing our hips, and that pattern is there. So we're activating that pattern, activating those muscles in that pattern, which helps it transfer the gains that you make with the exercise over to your everyday life. There you have the two routines for knee arthritis. So again, start with the beginner routine. I can't stress that enough. It's important to build that foundation before progressing up in intensity or complexity of exercises. And to get a summary of all of the exercises here, a layout of the reps, the sets, pictures of each exercise and important technique pointers, just click the link up above and also that'll be at the end of this video to download the cheat sheet for this. And this is gonna be really handy because you can do this routine now, do it for the next eight to 12 weeks, and then you might wanna come back to it maybe three, four, five months from now and do it again. Also, you could also benefit from our mobile app, the ROM Coach app, which you can also download at the link that we'll put at the end of this video. And this app has different routines and different exercises that will help you to improve your mobility all over your body. So you might have poor posture that you wanna work on or poor shoulder mobility that you wanna work on. And this app has it all. So you can check that out, download it. It's free to download and pretty easy to use. I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. All right, so again, my name is Eric Wong from Precision Movement. Thanks for watching the video and I hope to see you next time. Peace.